For the past three months, I've been working on a project where we count up every single spider person in the Marvel multiverse. That means every spider man, woman, child, ham, etc. throughout the comics, movies, video games, and so much more. But it's no secret that over the years, Spider Gwen has become a massive part of the Spider Man mythos, so I had to read every comic that Gwen was ever in. Now look, I like Spider-Gwen. Despite being an alternate universe variant of a pre-existing character, the actual comics themselves were a nice bit of fresh air when they first came out 10 years ago. But lately, her books haven't been great, and most of what made her special has been pushed to the wayside in favor of some of the most painfully average comics ever made. Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books, my name is Drake. Let's talk about it. But before getting too far into things, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Monopoly Go. I actually really like Monopoly and the variants of it. I've even designed one of my own. But if you're interested in seeing what a new take on it can look like, then check this out. There's that classic satisfying gameplay of squeezing every last dollar from your friends and family, but now you have some added goodies like mini games and bank heists. There's multiple themed boards based on famous cities like New York, London, and Paris, but also the classic iconography and pieces, like my favorite, the race car. But the game is also a lot more casual, so you can play it for as long as you want, whenever you want, without having to worry about devoting a lot of time to a dedicated long board game session. Monopoly Go is 100% free, so go ahead and tap my link to download it today. But for now, let's get back to the video. Spider-Gwen was specifically created for the Spider-Verse event in 2014, and to say that this event was ambitious is a huge understatement. While previous comics like DC's Christ on Infinite Earths might have theoretically involved literally infinite universes, we only really got to see, like, seven of them in practice. Well, Spider-Verse brought in any and every Spider-Man property that you could possibly think of, from the fighting games to the Hostess Snack Cake ads to my personal favorite, the live-action Japanese TV show from the 70s. But even though there were hundreds of universes to pull from, writer Dan Slott said, no, we need to create a bunch of brand new characters too. But thankfully he was cool enough to let other talented creators be the ones to take his ideas and actually make these new characters. The reason why it hurts so much that modern Spider-Gwen books aren't that great these days is because they were actually pretty damn good at first. Jason Latour and Robbie Rodriguez took the simple concept of what if Gwen was bitten by the spider and Peter was the one that died and absolutely ran with it by giving her universe a very indie alternative rock aesthetic that leans into the this universe is Gwen being a drummer for an indie alternative rock band. The best part is that Robbie Rodriguez had some friends with a band called Married with Sea Monsters, and he actually had them write a real version of the song that Gwen's band plays in her debut issue, and it absolutely slaps. Any good Spider comic focuses on the hero's interpersonal relationships and drama just as much as superheroics, and Gwen's comic has it in spades. She's blamed for the death of her universe's Peter Parker, which provides a complicated dynamic with her police chief father, and all of that guilt of thinking of how she could have saved him causes Gwen to retreat inwards and isolate herself from what friends she has left. The costume also kicks ass, so it's no surprise that people loved Gwen and immediately started cosplaying her. So by the time she actually made her appearance in the Spider-Verse event itself, Spider-Gwen was already a full-on phenomenon, and was even given the label of your new favorite. So Marvel capitalized on this further by giving new variant covers to every single book they were putting out at the time, with brand new Gwen variants of their characters. Most notably, there was Gwenpool, who ended up becoming a full-blown character in her own right that I absolutely adore, and you can learn all about her in my award-winning video about her rise and fall. Now, if we're going to be honest, Gwen actually didn't do much in the Spider-Verse event, but her one-shot sold so well that when it was over, she got her very own solo series, which continued to do what made that first story so great. Band and police dad drama, a great indie art style, and fun new takes on established characters, like Matt Murdock being New York's kingpin through a combination of his legal manipulation and army of ninjas. And Black Cat was a former member of Gwen's band who left to have a solo career as an international pop sensation while leaving her former bandmates in indie rock obscurity. Oh, and she's also a master thief on the side who's trying to get revenge on Murdoch for killing her father. I think that is some interesting shit, but it's completely overshadowed by Gwen's multiversal adventures. Yeah, 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 I've been talking for a while, and I am finally just now getting to the actual point of the video. I know. 
Spider-Gwen has lost all sense of identity because she isn't allowed to be herself or have her own stories anymore. Everything she does has to relate to the multiverse in some way, shape, or form. But that wasn't a huge deal at first. At the same time that Gwen's solo series was being published, she was also put onto a team called the Web Warriors, who are a bunch of spider people that go around protecting the multiverse. Both titles were kept separate in both story and tone. The goofier antics of, hey, we're fighting in a cartoon world, weren't put right next to, one of my best friends went to war in order to become a killing machine so that he could exact revenge on me because he thinks I killed our mutual friend. But we got our first peek of what was to come really early on in her solo series with the Spider Women event, a crossover between the main Marvel Universe of Earth 616 and Gwen's Earth 65. Don't get me wrong, it was a great event, which ended with Gwen actually losing her spider powers. There was a neat mechanic of Gwen getting a device that gave her powers in temporary bursts, but she only had a few charges, which resulted in these tense moments even after the crossover ended. This resulted in Gwen getting her universe's Venom symbiote, which she is still using to this day. I really like this. It sets her apart from the other spider people, and her costume looks sick as hell when she's in full-on Gwenom mode. About a year later, though, another multiverse crossover happened in her solo solo book, this time with Miles Morales. It tied up some loose ends from the spider Woman event, but it also put romantic tension on Gwen and Miles, even though they never really had any significant interactions before. But hey, props to them for writing Miles as a very realistic teenager, where after kissing her once and then being explicitly told they should just be friends, he still brags to all of his friends about how he totally has a girlfriend, but she lives in a different universe, so no, you can't meet her. It is extremely obvious that once the Spider-Verse trailer dropped, Marvel Comics was like, shit, we actually need to print some comics where these two characters are interacting, and they scrambled to put together this extremely forgettable crossover. It's also worth noting that Gwen's solo series ended right as Into the Spider-Verse came out, and you know what replaced it? A really short solo series that started as a simple tie-in to yet another Spider-Verse event, and ends with Gwen deciding that she wants to hang around Earth-616, and immediately got a new series where she's going to school as, I kid you not, a multiversal exchange student. Sure, she commutes to and from her home universe, but guess where she spends the majority of her time? That's right, 616. Because instead of giving potential new fans an entire comic and that awesome aesthetic that's shown off in the movie, Marvel's takeaway from the film was, we should have as many spider people hanging out together all the time. This also directly ties in with the other major problem with Spider-Gwen, that name. Yeah, you, me, and everyone knows her as Spider-Gwen, but technically that's not her superhero name. It's Spider-Woman. Of course, though, there's already a Spider-Woman on Earth-616 who has her own comic, so things would get confusing if there were two people with the exact same title. Even though Marvel does that all the time with Spider-Man and Spider-Man, Hawkeye and Hawkeye, Wolverine and Wolverine, Captain America and Captain America, the sad part is that I could really go on and on and on. But either way, Spider-Gwen as a name doesn't work because having part of your real name be a part of your superhero identity is a really dumb idea, like Bruce Man or Matt Devil. Remember how Brian Michael Bendis decided that Tim Drake's new code name should just be Drake? Well, as a Drake myself, I think I have the authority to say that, that was an extremely dumb move. The comic tried to reconcile this because she ended up losing her secret identity, and some people started calling her Spider-Gwen as a joke. But this approach really doesn't work. In fact, one of the main reasons why Gwen specifically wanted to hang around Earth-616 is because she wanted to regain her anonymity. Once again though, 616 has a Spider-Woman, so she instead opted for Ghost Spider. Though, this doesn't really matter to us comic fans, especially those of us that have been around since she was first created, because at the end of the day, she will always just be Spider-Gwen. But back to me bitching about the multiverse. Gwen got a couple more miniseries, Gwenverse, which is exactly what it sounds like, and Shadow Clones, which, although it wasn't technically a multiverse story, each of her clones were, what if Gwen was also this villain? So for all intents and purposes, it was the exact same thing that we've been getting and have been getting tired of for years. But you know what? There are plenty of tropes that regardless of how overused they are, I don't mind them if the stories are good. These two miniseries though, they're not bad, but they're painfully average. And in three months, I'm likely never going to think about them ever again. Although I do want to give a huge shout out to David Nakayama, who did all of the covers for these two books, because not only are they really well done, but he's been a huge fan and supporter of the channel ever since I covered his Big Hero 6 comic back in 2019, and we're always talking back and forth to each other on threads. Love you, dude. But anyway, I'll admit the multiverse burnout isn't an exclusively Gwen problem. Because superhero movies have popularized the idea of the multiverse, we've been getting so damn many of them across TV and movie projects 
comics to the point where people are getting sick of the concept. It also doesn't help that Marvel Comics themselves have been dipping into the Spider-Verse well again and again and again, to the point where this really special and interesting event has become mundane and routine. It's not like I'm saying that I don't want Gwen to ever be in a multiverse story ever again, but I miss her going on adventures in her own world. I miss all of her Earth-65 supporting characters, and as much as I do like the art of Kei Zama and Takayashi Miyazawa, I miss Robbie Rodriguez's original work. Marvel has a disgusting problem of taking exciting new ideas and bleeding them dry with diminishing returns. They have consistently been all about short-term gains without even thinking about the future, which is a huge part of why they aren't selling as many comics as they used to because they left such a mess. I love this company. Many Marvel comics are some of the best stories that I've ever seen across any entertainment medium, but Spider-Gwen was lightning in a bottle, and they're not going to make that lightning strike twice if they keep pulling her away from what made us fall in love with her books in the first place. But that's all I have for today. And if you want to learn more about comic history and the comic industry, then please consider subscribing. Every single one helps. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.